Treaties are agreements between two national governments. Tax treaties are such agreements that modify the tax law of each of the two countries. U.S. tax treaties do just that, usually. For example, all of our treaties reduce the 30% withholding tax on interest paid to non-residents if they're resident of the treaty country. However, some U.S. tax law provisions modify or override the treaties. For example, the regulations under Section 7701L prevent this reduction of withholding tax on interest paid under certain conduit financing arrangements. The most important thing you need to remember about treaties is that since every treaty is different, you must always read the treaty. Always. There are a lot of things in common among treaties, but no two are the same in all respects. With over 65 different unique treaties out there, how do you keep things straight? Well, you just have to read Read each one as you need it. Don't ever forget to check the treaty. This video won't tell you details of every treaty. We'll just look at common patterns and some examples. We're going to cover general provisions, a concept called permanent establishment, and some typical other provisions. All treaties do a few things but do some of those differently. The first they all do is to define what taxes are covered by the treaty. Our income tax treaties all cover federal income tax and AMT. Almost none of them cover state or local taxes of any sort. They all cover the income tax imposed at the national level by the other country, whatever it's called. Oddities abound, though. For instance, the Swiss Treaty covers taxes imposed on income by the Swiss federal, cantonal, and local governments, but not any U.S. state or local taxes. Go figure. The second thing all of them do is define who is a resident and can get the benefits of the treaty. The definitions of resident are all over the map, though. One reason for this divergence is difference in how each country taxes people. Once upon a time, if you met the rather terse definition of resident, you got all the treaty benefits. This led folks like me to set up artificial companies in weird places to artificially avoid tax using treaties. Now, nearly all U.S. treaties have an article called Limitation on Benefits that tends to fix this. We'll talk about that later. The third thing all treaties do is limit tax on business profits to only those situations where the foreign person has a permanent establishment in the taxing country. They also have a definition of permanent establishment, or PE. Most of the treaties have the same definition of what is a PE, but have some notable differences. We'll discuss PE at length. The last thing all treaties do is have a sort of procedure for resolving disputes between the countries on tax matters. This is handled by negotiations between specifically designated officials in each country called the competent authority. There are a lot of things that are typical in treaties, but the details of which vary a lot. All U.S. treaties reduce the rate of withholding tax on dividends, interest, and royalties. Many of them reduce the tax on interest and royalties to zero. Most of them provide a different rate of withholding tax on individual versus intercorporate dividends, where the dividend is paid by a company in one treaty country to a shareholder company in the other treaty country. The final rate of tax often depends 
on whether the shareholding company owns more than a certain percent interest in, of the shares, often 15% or 25%. You've got to read the treaty to see what's taxed at what rate. Nearly all of our treaties provide that each country has to grant a foreign tax credit. A lot of these provisions are redundant to either U.S. or the foreign law, since most countries tend to have unilateral provisions on foreign tax credit. Some of the treaties, though, may modify things like what income is considered in computing the credit. Always read the treaty. So what's a resident? Treaties distinguish between residency for income tax purposes, called fiscal domicile, and residency for other purposes. Fiscal domicile generally means the person has to pay income tax in the particular country as a resident. Some countries have multiple classes of residents. For some countries, residence doesn't matter so the treaty needs to define what it takes to be a resident. The residence rules may be different for individuals than for corporations or some types of businesses. For companies, residence may mean where the corporation is organized or where it is managed and controlled. Some games can be played where there's difference. Individuals tend to be resident where they normally live. Some countries or treaties, though, have mechanical tests. One key feature of treaties is they usually have a tiebreaker clause for individuals. There's usually a tiered set of tests to determine residency under the treaty, where the rules of both countries say, say a person is resident in each country. Here's the first quiz.